Welcome back to Comic Book History. This is episode 69. Now, I did promise my last video I did, which was 15 days ago, believe it or not. Yes, last one I did was on a little bit two weeks ago. This one was last one. So, I promised I would discuss Ninja Mutants. Yeah, the reason why it took me so long, because I have been distracted by everything, so here I am. Here I'm discussing the New Mutants. Yes, the New Mutants. Technically, in a way, the X-Men's first ever spin-off ongoing series. Something that is so heavily associated with the X-Men. And a lot of its members, some people who basically are part of the X-Men today, started out with the New Mutants. Born back in 1980, I think it was 1984, I think it was, right? It was 1982. First appeared in Marvel Graphic Novel number 4. We're thinking number 4. Yes, because two two graphic novels over this one was the critically acclaimed number six X Men God loves man kills. Now, simply put, this group was formed by accident, believe it or not. Yes, one of the time it was a time shows that he mistakenly thought the X Men were dead, so he decided to recruit a new team. So this team was comprised of at the time this group first started was comprised of Sunspot, Moonstone. Uh, Danny Moonstone, a.k.a. Moonshine, Cannonball, Karma, and Wolfsbane. Yes, this was the group they started with. They later added Warlock and Cypher, a.k.a. Doug Ramsey. This was the primary group for a lot of the book's run. It mostly was written by about... Now, this book... Only, now, after the success of the original Marvel graphic novel, they eventually got an ongoing series that lasted 100 issues. Well, the first five anyways, had seven annuals, one of whom I believe was in or five was the first of our American parents of Psylocke. Yes, Psylocke may have first parents in an annual for New Mutants. Yes. So, also we, we had Ileana, aka the, the, the younger sister of Colossus. She was even briefly part of this team too. She, this is a team that she's primarily associated with. Yep. And this book also a debut of Celine, issue number eight. Yep. Issue number eight had the debut of the beautiful Celine, the life energy vampire. Yes. The woman who's been alive since the time of the Roman Empire. Yep. This is her comic premiere debut appearance. Oh, in case you're curious, though, has this woman ever changed her costume? No, she's always really, she's always worn the same exact outfit. Some slight alterations over the years, but mostly put, that's simply what it is. And she's always generally been the Black Queen of Hellfire Club for a lot of the time she's been around. She may not have been the original Black Queen, but she's been primarily associated with the with the Hellfire Club. And this group basically, now Doug Ramsey, when he initially joined the group, he was part of the group for a good period of time until the events of. Get this. Fall of the Mutants. Yep. Fall of the Mutants. Yep. Yeah. He joined in issue number 21. And then he died. Yep. He died on a mission. Yeah. This is now. They also have Magneto join this team. Well, the serve as their mentor. Yes, Magneto was part of the X Men briefly back in the 1980s. Yeah, the other members during this period of time for the original volume of New Moons were, well, yeah, Shadowcat. Well, when she was part of this group, she had she had no desire to become part of this group. She even spouted the infamous Linus in parody. Fast like Xavier is a jerk. She hated to be part of New Moons. Basically, she's when she was next men. Yeah, she may have been 14 years old when she first joined the X Men, but. She had no desire to become part of the mutants, but she kind of was. We also had Magma. Yeah, she was barely part of this group. Yeah, it was also Magic, Eliana. There was also several other people part of this group. Some of these names you might find familiar. Yes. And this was in the original New Mutants volume. Yeah, Magma became part of the group in issue 200. Warlock and Cypher joined issue 21. 55, this was worth five issues before... Death of Cypher, we had a guy called Birdbraid. His name was Bird Boy. Fire Fist, aka Rusty Collins. Skids, Richter, Boom Boom, Cable, Warpath, Shatterstar, and Feral. Yeah, these people were generally part of this group 
from the start. Yes, well, when the group basically during the original run, which lasted from 1980, let's see if we can find the actual, like, start. I think it was like 1983, I think it was, to pretty much like, hmm. it was from 1982 well, 19, 1983 to 1981. Yes, that was simply put the original run for the book. Now, the book itself only had three writers. First, you had Chris Claremont. He wrote a small majority of the book. And we all said, and the Senti. Yeah, she took over the book too. She actually put out some pretty decent issues. The last writer was... Well, what one of the writers was Louise Simonson. Yep, she briefly was a writer of the book. And Fame in the Caesar. This book also was a debut, well, not only Cable, but also the debut of Deadpool in issue number 98. Yes, we also had a debut of Shatterstar. Yes, the character who Rob Liefeld created. Yeah, Rob Liefeld was actually... I heard that initially he came on to this book because he basically... He came in the book with issue number 87 up until the final issue. The reason why he came on to this book was because the book was not selling too well. And he wanted to something like, not really like high tier book. I mean, at DC, he had jumped over DC after doing uh, the Hawk and Dove series. So he, this is, of course, he mentions an interview I actually watched. He initially did New Mutants because he wanted to try something like, something that's not very popular. Try something like, vi revitalize the group. When Gable joined on the team, he became the initial mentor of the team and the actual kind of the leader of the team. He didn't supplant, let's say, Cannonball or Sunspot. Oh yeah, and also, Sunspot is Brazilian. Despite the fact some people who tend to color him when he appears in other books, they pair him as simply, like, black, even though his skin's based, even though he's Brazilian. Yeah, the guy is Brazilian. Yeah. Yeah, Warlock, if you're curious about this guy... You were thinking, Warlock? You mean Adam Warlock, the alien? Well, war this Warlock is technically an alien, but he is part of the Feralax. They are a techno-organic aliens. He's called Warlock because that's his name. And he was referred to people as self-friend. That's simply what the character is. This book was also the debut, had the debut of the character Legion. Yes, he made his debut in this book. Yes, Legion. If you're thinking, Legion, who the heck is that? Well, that's the son of Charles Xavier. And yes, this guy was also the focus of a TV show. Put on by FX. Yep. Now, pretty much... Now, in case anybody's ever read the New Mutant series, this book was tied into a few different crossovers during the 80s. Books like The Mutant Massacre, Inferno, Follow the Mutants. And it was also part of many more crossovers. Yeah, a lot of them, like, oh my gosh, it was like a ton of them. Like, it was part of Mutant Massacre, Fall Moon, the Inferno, uh, Extinction Genta. And Extinction Genta was technically the last one was part of. Yeah, this was the last one officially was part of. Uh, just before the series concluded. Yeah, because the, the original volume concluded right after this. Yeah, and initially put Rob Laffo, who teamed the fame in the seas at this point, decided to, for the last few issues, decided to simply relaunch the group as X Force. I will talk about them in the, in the following episode. But right after this, news were gone. Gone completely. For several years, until they had, they also did this mini series, New Mutants Truth There, where we had New Mutants from the 80s series meet X Force, well, from the 90s. Then after that, in 2003, we had Revive the Noons, but not the same incarnation. No, it was a brief ongoing series that led into new X-Men Academy X. The new mutants that were part of this incarnation had nothing pretty much to do with the original group. Nope, Wolfman was part of the group. Well, she was basically the mentor of the group. Now, these particular people will... Now, some of these people basically are familiar with some people because of their parents and their books. Uh, yeah, these members are new mutants basically throughout pretty much basically the actual run. Now, this was written by Nigel DePhillips and Christina Weir. 
who later in writing New, New X Men Academy X, until it was taken over by Chris Jones and Greg Kyle. The members were e Elixir, Icarus, this guy was the brother of the one of the members of the New Mutants, Cannonball, his real name was Jay Gare, Prodigy, who for some stupid reason, Karen Gilly out of this guy is gay. I'm not kidding about that. Surge, Wallfowler, who actually got killed off in the pages of New X-Men, Wind Dancer, and Wither. Okay, thing about this guy Wither is, he had a very similar power base to Selene, and apparently his powers didn't really work on Selene. Apparently whatever he touched turned to ash. Yes, that was this guy's power. Well, that was until he left the new X-Men, joined up with Selene, and became one of the primary villains of Nerosha. Yes. Now, as for New Mutants itself, well, pretty much after the events of, I think it was when the X moved out to the West Coast, Marvel decided to revive the New, X, the new Mutants back in 2009. This time with new writers. I've talked to briefly Bob McLean about this incarnation. This, this incarnation was done by Zeb Wells. Though at one point was written by Karen Gillian of all people. Yes, Karen Gillian wrote this book. This book had a very interesting line. Mostly put it's a mixture of like new, like new, old American mutants. Who are back in their own mutants costumes per se. You have Cannonball, Karma, Magic, Magma, Sunspot. Pretty much people basically part of the original lineup. Oh, Mirage, aka well, Danny Moonstar, Cypher he joined a team. Yeah, he was he was actually revived during the events of Nerosha and still alive this very day. He's even an integral part of Jonathan Hickman's X-Men books right now. Yeah, he is pretty much how should I put this? He is the speaker for the island of of Kr uh, Krakatoa. Yep. The other members are if I get stopped now, please, thank you. The other members are Warlock briefly joined the team. We also have X Men joined the team. Yes, X Men. We also have Blink. Yes, Blink, the 616 version of the character. And that was it. The book lasted for 50 issues and was concluded right after AVX. As for why the book was concluded, not really sure actually. The book was actually was an integral part of a few different crossovers during the period of time. Aside from the Rosha, it also had a tie in the Siege. It had a really good crossover with Journey the Mystery, which basically had a team with, with Kid Loki. Yeah, this was a very excellent time to read this book. I've read it. It is really, really good. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's called Ex Exiled. And then, like, not long after this bit. Oh, yeah, also they had a tie in to Fear Itself. And it was also Age of X. Yeah, it was basically the the pretty much the twenty the pretty much the twenty ten version of Age Apocalypse. It's just another take on it. It basically is a reality caused by Legion. And I done my Legion himself, unlike in the other time, <laughs> where where Bishop had to freaking kill him in order to do the Age Apocalypse reality. And then once the series concluded in twenty twelve the series made on the shelf for about seven years until it was brought back by John at Bronson and Jonathan Hickman in 2019 as part of Jonathan Hickman's basically his his little fresh start initiative for the X-Men books. Though despite the fact John Hickman and Bronson went to the writer of the book, they have since left the book after the first twelve issues. Hickman didn't write all the issues of this run, he wrote a handful of issues. Yes, he wrote issue 1, 2, 5, and 7. Yes. And Bronson did pretty much the rest, like 3, 4, 6, and 8, the 13. The current writer is Valt Alla. It's been part of one crossover to date, and that's been the X of Swords, which I actually like this crossover. My friend Tibby is not a really big fan of it at all. And it's going to be part of the Way of X crossover, which is the next crossover coming out this year. Which, okay, doing one crossover per year, that's not bad. And I believe there's some build-up to it, yes. Now, initially put for this particular era of New Mutants, yeah, for Hickman's books, basically had the original members of New Mutants go off to outer space to get back 
cannonball from outer space. Why? Well, there's a very simple reason for that. In between, basically, Volume Screen 4, Cannonball and Sunspot joined the Avengers. Where they had a very strange looking... They had these whirling costumes. And they looked pretty bad. And they had some really terrible interactions with the Superior Spider-Man. Where it's real that Dr. Octopus actually hates mutants. Yes, that's the way Hickman wrote him. Probably because he didn't like the Superior Spider-Man. He probably liked writing the original Spider-Man better. It was during this period of time Cannonball met, fell in love, and later married the new Smasher of the Imperial Guard. Yeah, a woman named Izzy, who he basically not only married her, he also had a baby with her. Yes, he had a baby, which Hickman kept that. Thank you, Hickman, for doing that. And after Hickman wrapped up that particular run, Sunspot basically took up the initiative, basically, to buy AIM. Yes, he bought frickin' AIM and transformed into the Avengers. The Avengers Idea Mechanics. For New Avengers by Al Ewing. And then it was sold to the United States as U.S. Avengers. Yep. Where this was still a very interesting book itself. It's simple to the group run by, of course, the... the it's basically the Vision of S.H.I.E.L.D. per se. And Sunspot was the lead of the team. He also called himself Citizen V this period of time. Also, for some reason, the artist decided to have it where he started to have greatest hair for some reason. I don't know why. And once this book was concluded, issue 12, the group pretty much dis- was pretty much suspended thanks to the events of No Road Home. Well, knows of the events of No Surrender, where it was renamed to, or- the, re- the organization renamed to Rescue, which Sunspot decided to hand off basically to something else. Sunspot himself went back to the mutants and simply went out of space and tried to hook up with, with Deathbird for some reason. Yeah, I have no idea why Hickman thought we got to hook up with Deathbird. Even though Deathbird is still technically married to Vulcan. Apparently Hickman has forgotten the fact, either he forgotten or probably didn't know, that Vulcan was actually married to Deathbird and had a baby with her. Yes, seriously. As for the... Now, pretty much the other issues were simply put the rest of the mutants while dealing with some... Big B- gets all for I think it's in in like some in Western state I think it was. It's a very interesting book under Ed Bronson. Now it's under different writer Vic uh, Alia. Now book basically Newman's has never let's just say it's never had a writer where it stick around for a good period of time. Yes, I know for a fact that Hickman and Ed Bronson were initially announced to be the initial writers, but now it's a completely different writer for the book. As far as I know, there's been no explained reason for this of why in the world that the writer decided to simply leave the book. Yes. Now, in case you're curious, though, Zeb Wells actually left with issue 21 of New Mutants Volume 3. And he headed off to, of all people, Karen Gillian. Yep. Karen Gillian basically was the one who took over the book. Yes. As for why he decided to do it... I have no idea. It's particularly quite weird. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, if you're curious, some of the other members, like Karma, for example. Karma was a woman who Marvel laid her out of her as a lesbian, and for years, despite like being a lesbian, not much was done with it, per se, until around the 2010s, where they had it with a girl, with a woman. Yep. Had with a woman. Yep, as for Wolfsbane herself, she was primarily part of the mutants for a while, left, did her own thing for a while, uh, basically went to Rick Remender's Uncanny X-Force, I think it was actually, not his one, it was actually Chris Jones and Craig Kyle's one for X-Force, where she fell in love with a, dis- with a with son of Ferris Wolf, got pregnant, had a child, which actually re- she rejected, until where by not decided to take the child as his own. And then the child got killed by, of all people, Strong Guy. Yep, Strong Guy killed Wolfsbane's son. Excuse me, or King of Hell. Surprisingly, despite the fact he's a son of a mutant, he's not been revived under Hickman's initiative for some reason. Yes, I know why. As for, as for some of the other members, well... 
Warlock himself is kind of partially merged with what Doug Ramsey is around this very day. Danny Moonstar is one who's flopped back and forth exactly what the heck she's, Marvel does with this character. Like, she initially is popular with a few different groups over the years. She's part of, like, X-Force, the Fearless Defenders, which was a really good book for her. At one point, she became one... She's actually one of the Valkyrie right now. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of the characters were killed off and were brought back. Yeah. As... If, you, if you're curious to what happened to Icarus, Cannonball's brother, he gets killed by William Stryker, who he killed him after he amputated his wings. Yeah, so Icarus has them in common with Archangel, having his wings amputated. Though in the case of Archangel, it was actually for a different reason, because they, because some people thought the wings were infecting his body. Yeah, it was all due to Cameron Hodge's manipulations. Yeah. But if you're curious about the moons, they're actually a fantastic group. And a lot of their era is like, if you look at, let's say, the original classic era for New Mutants, the original 100 issues, a lot of it is in trade. And I do mean a lot of it. I would say almost the entire run. Yes, pretty much like just about the entire run. Uh, the only, the only let's just say, issues not in trade that I see is issues 74 through 85. Yeah, 74 to 85. And like one or two, and like a few of the annuals, but that's been pretty much it for the whole the whole volume itself. Uh, volume 2 is in trade. Yeah, there's actually two volume series. There's actually um, an actual trade that collects the whole entire run. It's called New Year's Back to School, the complete collection, which collects all 13 issues of the run itself. Volume 3, all in trade. No surprise there because it's come up here time everything has been put in the trade, no problem. Volume 4. Uh, officially, there's been two trades been released so far. You have the Hickman books, you have the Ed Bronson book, and Vic Nolly, which come out. Uh, Thought to Allah is coming out in August. I do own the first two trades. It's a really good run. I do highly recommend it. Yes. Now, people who join the group later on, after. Let's just say initial book. Um, during the main team, of course, you have Chamber Mundo. Yeah, they came part of the mutants. Yeah, Chamber, if you're curious about this guy, this guy showed up during, I think during... Yeah, he was from Generation X. He's a Scott Lobdell character. A very interesting character this guy is. Yeah, he's a guy who looks like he doesn't have a mouth. And, like, there's a there was a uh, basically a line set by one of the female members of the mutants, like... Like, especially this woman in love with Camber, like, really? There's no mouth to kiss, which probably offended the guy. Yeah, this guy even had his own mini series in 2001. You're thinking, really? Chamber had a mini series? Yeah, he did. And he's popped up occasionally, stuff associated with Apocalypse. Then we have Strong Guy. Yeah, he joined in Phoenix Resurrection number two. And Cable 150, which I have read this one. You have, you have Blink, Longshot, X-23, a.k.a. Laura, a.k.a. Wolverine, Armor and Dupe became part of the newer mutants. It's actually a really good storyline by Ed Bronson. It's really good. Highly recommended. Yeah, it's interesting, though, that he wrote mutants in Page of Cable, and then later on he wrote the mutants, which is awesome. Yes. Yeah. But in the case of basically, like, if you think of, like, very important stuff for mutants basically look, to look for... Is the first appearance from New Moons number? Uh, gra it's from New graphic number four, Mark number four. You contract also New Moons eighty seven, which is the first appearance of Cable. Made his first appearance probably on the cover. Rob Liefeld he sent it on purpose. Just know the fact that this is basically the first appearance of Cable. Uh, ninety eight is a good issue to track down because of how much bigly popular Deadpool is, because it's his first appearance. If you're a fan of Shadow Star, look for issue 99. 100, all it is, is simply put the backdoor power to X-Force. Yep, that's simply what it is. Now, in the case of basically talking about other stuff related to the X-Men, people have talked to death about the X-Men over the years. New Mutants, surprisingly, doesn't get a lot of basically, like, retrospective per se. 
Now, outside the comics, New Mutants have popped up occasionally. Like, they popped up first on X-Men Evolution. Yes. They were part of, like, the next stream of X-Men. Basically, just Boom Boom, Cannonball, Magma, Sunspot, Wolfsbane, a lot of Berserker, Iceman, Jumbley, and Multiple Man. Yep. Yeah. And they were also get this name in the series Mutant uh, Mute X. Now, if you're curious, though, what Mutant X was, there's actually two different Mutant X. There's a comic series called this that probably focused on Havoc, which was basically picked up X at the left off. And then there was a TV show that got canceled after three years. Yeah, it was a weird series. And after the first two years, their leader left and was replaced by a woman. And another member of the group, I think her name was Emma, she left. And during the series' final episode, their headquarters was destroyed along with their transportation. Mutant X was simply put Fox's attempt at the time. I think it was Fox, wasn't it, to basically do the show. It was, it lasted from 2001-2004. It was, let's see, what was the channel that had this on? I've seen it. It's a very interesting show. It was on... Sorry about this. It was itching. Uh... Maybe on Fox. I'm not sure. Let's see. It was on... I'm not sure what it was, basically. It was made by a company called Fireworks Entertainment. It had nothing to do with the original comic book. Which basically a similar name. Yeah, had nothing to do with it. And then there was a couple times news were featured, like in Days Future Past, which that was a really movie. And then there was the awful film. Yes, I've heard the film was really bad. I haven't seen it. I've heard that Bobby Clean doesn't like the film at all. He also didn't like the fact they misspelled his name. Yes, they misspelled his name. Yeah. I'm not kidding about that. He absolutely hated the New Mutants live action film. He hated the fact that Sunspot was white. Oh yeah. He also didn't like the fact that his name was... Let's see. They put an A as MacLean. He was Ma McLean. I think it's pronounced the guy's name. Yeah. He... This is another thing he'd like though. And... The whole purpose of New Mutants being a training squad. Not be their own separate team per se. That was the whole point of the team. And I, of course, have not seen the Mutants yet, but I probably will eventually see this film and, like, get my own take on it. How, when I, when, I, when I saw trailers for this, I'm like, wow, Fox really doesn't understand the whole point of New Mutants. Like, they basically had it where there's like this mental institution and it's a horror movie. Uh,. Have they actually read the comic book? Because there's been horror elements in it, but it's not a horror book. It has never been. It's a training squad for the X-Men. Just make it like the X-Men. I mean, how is it so hard? And it was a recurring joke for several years. Excuse me, yes. The fact that they kept freaking delaying this freaking movie. Like, oh my gosh. Like... This movie was the, the release. This movie, oh my gosh, was movie one. Like, a, here's the thing with the movie: it was released, re, supposed to release April 13, 2018, and then delayed to February 22nd, 2019, and then August 2nd, 2019, and then was finally released like this past August. Had to be delayed freaking twice. Yes, twice. As far as I can tell, this movie had so much problems with it. From what I heard, like the fact that at one point that. Like, prior to its release last year. It was complete about two years prior to that. And, like, they had to do some reshoots of this movie. Like, this movie was a big, humongous mess when I heard behind the scenes. But this movie initially will be discussed when I get a chance to watch the movie. And talk about uh, my movie review along with Dark Phoenix. Yes, I will discuss both these two when I get a chance to watch them. Yep. But in the case videos all together... This is the only video I plan for today because I don't have a new anime today. So I figured though, why not talk about do comic history on the moons? Now, with the next episode, 
I, you probably think, okay, I, I discussed news. Why not talk about X Force next? Well, there's one particular group I really wanted to talk about. I've talked about it initially on my comic history, not a comic corner, and that's the Legion of Superhero. Yes, I'm discussing the next three videos, actually four videos on the four different versions of, of this team: the pre-zero version, post-zero version, the three boots, and the Bendis version. Yes. Four different versions. Though the Venice version is going to be very... Well, Venice version I might not talk about because I initially have discussed this group or this version of the group already. Yeah. But the pre zero one, that there's a lot to talk about with that one. A lot of post zero, a little bit to talk about when it comes to reboot. That's what they call it anyways. Yep. But to the next video. Bye.